Hello. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you all about documentary Into the Ace. My name is Juan Flores and this case is about two adolescents that were sentenced to life in prison and death row. What could have, uh, have, have they done to receive a so harsh punishment? And will you ask yourself why? Well, these two gentlemen killed three people. And, and again, why would three, two adolescents kill three people? Well, simple. They wanted to get a car, a red Camaro. And then you ask yourself, is the life of three people so not valuable enough to, for the car? Uh, that seems a little bit harsh. So, now that we have talked about the penalty, let me explain to you what is it. Capital punishment. Capital punishment is when someone kills some, somebody and they go to court and the court says that they are going to get that sentence. Which means the government is going to execute that person. So that's capital punishment. The terrorists. The terrorists. So if you see that someone is getting executed by the government because that person committed a crime, he killed someone, that should prevent people from committing that crime. Prevent future crime. Even if someone is in jail, that doesn't mean that they're gonna stop uh, committing crimes. You can still kill in, in jail. Those it, those person can uh, harm our officers or other employees in, in the jail facilities. And punishment fits a crime. Not everybody is sentenced to death. You have to meet certain criteria. So if you kill somebody, yes. If, if you rape some someone, that doesn't mean you're gonna get the sentence because the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Now let's talk about the negative side. One every twenty-five people are innocent. So if we kill hundred people, four of those people were innocent, and that doesn't look good at all. Does not deter crime as intended. Many people would think if they're killing people for killing more, they're getting executed for killing people, that will prevent people from killing each other. And that's not the case. We always hear in the news that people are getting executed and that doesn't, and people keep killing each other. So, does not serve as a deterrent. So, system is not fair. What does that mean? Well, if we have two people in a murder trial, and one of them is an average person, and the other side we have a multimillionaire. The average person is not gonna have money for an attorney, and this is gonna assign one to them. And that attorney maybe is gonna have a lot of cases, you're not gonna have the time, maybe not the resources, or not or the experience. And the other side, the millionaire is gonna hire a group of attorneys that probably have the resources, experience. And all the attention is going to be on his case, so he's going to get a better defense. So, execution costs three times more than life sentences. Well, many people think that just because uh, they're going to kill, they're going to execute an inmate, that should solve the overcrowded population in our jails. Well, in fact, we have so many people in jails that we're the number one country with the highest number of incarceration. So. We could have three people in jail for life, or we can kill somebody. So now let's talk about Lex Terriones. So a knife for a knife. If someone kills your friend, you have the right to kill them back. And that's morally incorrect. Because what if they fail to kill you, and you just an intent? How are you going to punish them? You cannot go and try to kill them and fail on purpose. That doesn't seem right. That's why we have the criminal justice system. They have guidelines, procedures, so if someone tries to kill you and fails, they have the right punishment and that person is going to get a fair trial. So now that we have talked about capital punishment, let me give you a little fun facts so we, so you can be more familiarized with the topic. So for example, in 1991 to 2000, we have 44 executions per year in the United States. And after that, in 2001, we still have 3,500 people waiting uh, in that row. The United States 
is allowed in 37 states for murders done speci under special circumstances. Excessive brutality, brutality fighter public threat, and child victims. Federal law also permits death sentences for acts of treason, terrorism, murder, and major drug trafficking. The lethal injection is the primary method of, of execu execution in the United States with death penalty. So, in some of states, we have hanging, firing squad, and electric electrocutions that are, are also possible. But many people uh, believe that's inhumane. So, many people, many states are opting for the lethal injection. And on the other hand, we have people that think that we're going to on them, just killing them without suffering. Many of those victims that had suffered a lot because many of them were stabbed, shot, um, brutally murdered. So they suffer a lot and those inmates get in the dead row, get the injection and they die peacefully. So however, capital punishment remains only the only le legitimate state sponsored form of corporal punishment. And for this punishment, the physical pain is this fear associated with that sentence have diminished over time. So the US Supreme Court placed a legal mandate over moratorium on capital punishment as a result of the ruling case of, of Furman versus Georgia. Well after the ruling the court said the court said that the punishment was cruel and Initial punishment for in violation of the 8th and 14th Amendment, which as a result, 600 of inmates waiting for their role got their sentence this minute, commuted, and got his life in prison. So, the, the punishment didn't fit the crime. So, compared to our brothers in Europe, over the last 20th century, the crime rate for serious offenses in the United States is unparalleled, which meant that. Our crime rate is higher. It has one of the highest murder rates in the, in the world. And its level of other violent crimes, like, for so example, rape and robbery and other serious property crimes, such so as burglary and auto theft, is also markedly higher than other foreign other countries. So, let's talk about the documentary. Well, the secondary interviews offers a different opinions about capital punishment. It offers points of view from the killers, one sentence to life in prison, and they are sentenced to death. Also, points of view of the families of victims, wife of the killer, uh, the father of one of the inmates, a priest, and the executioner himself. So, the executioner himself quit his job after one, twenty-four uh, executions. Why? Because in the last one, there was a girl, and I don't know how his brain changed, so he had to quit his job and lose, it, lose his pension. I think that's a, a little bias, because he killed 123 people, and for one girl, he decided to quit. Now, these documentary strengths are that it provides strong evidence and facts about what really happened in the case. It includes actual video of police investigation, the crime scene location and demonstrative evidence. Moreover, the documentary shows the truth about how families of the victims feel. The video also shows how people murder without feeling bad about their actions, and this, and this makes some viewers feel like the inmates deserve to be killed. For example, when they were interviewing the Michael, Michael, which is the one that killed the late Sandra, so. Let me talk to you about Michael. So, Michael was 19, 19 years old at the time of the crime. So, like any graduate of high school, you would think that the most they could do is drugs. Well, this kid was already killing people. He killed Sandra Sutter because he wanted a cover. He killed her with a shotgun. He, him and his friend Jason, Jason served as a distraction while Mike Perry got into the house of Sandra and shot her. You would think, someone with a shotgun is trying to steal your car, you give the, the keys and you let him run away. And he killed her. Well, he was the only one there, so maybe it was a misfire or an accident. 
Thought later, he killed Jeremy and Adam. Why? He got locked outside and he needed a remote to open the gate. So he killed two more innocent people. So from there you see that he killed Sandra because he wanted to, not because he needed to. So you think, you see the, that he didn't have remorse on the victims. Now let me see. Jason Aaron Burkett, sentenced to life in jail. Why? Why if Michael got a death sentence, why this gentleman got life in jail? Well, well first of all, his father is in jail. Since he was a young kid, his father was going in and out of jail, so that probably leaves his mom to support a house. A house a single mother can support a house while working a couple of jobs. So he didn't have any role models to follow, and people and the jury felt sorry for him and gave him life in sentence. Life in jail. But well, looking at the point of view of the families of the victims, one can feel the rage and understand why they support the executions against Michael Perry. This documentary makes you see both sides of the issue. The family of the victims are are for it, even one of them members said. Some people don't deserve to live. Was another side of the issue, so Michael's first wife saying how her husband does not deserve this kind of punishment. Or well, nobody wants to see their loved ones die. Also, uh, the inmate, the father of Jason, said something that really touched me. I think killing Michael didn't deter anything or didn't bring those people back. So, in fact, yes, we, they execute uh, Michael and people were still killing, killing more people. And yes, after killing those people, you, they didn't resuscitate those that are, are already died. But justice is justice. So in, in the documentary, we see the priest talking about how he feels he feels bad about all the executions. But that's putting emotion to the video, so you will feel. Well, the priest uses emotions to persuade those people into thinking that the sentence it is wrong. Well, it it kind of is because we're killing those people that kill other people and and so on. So there's a, like a cycle. But according to Liva, a new study believes that the figure in one every time twenty five people or four point one percent are sentenced to death for crimes that they didn't commit which means that not all cases are like the one in the documentary show. Documentary, some are unfair. So, in conclusion, I, I think that the death sentence is fair because even though it does not deter crime as is intended, it deters the common persons to not commit crimes because there's only one small percentage of people that are in jail and most of the most of the people outside are good people that don't want to be in there and thinking about getting killed for killing another person makes makes us uh think about how lucky we are and uh, appreciate the fact that we're free so so let's talk about the execution of michael perry so, in the after he was, well, in the execution room, it was the family of of the victim and family of Michael. You would think that's unfair for the family of Michael to see his son, her son die. Yeah, it kind of it is because nobody wants to see their son die. But in their hand, we see the family of the victim saying that they were relieved. They felt good because they had closure and people need closure because he lost two of his family members she lost sandra and adam so if someone can kill three people i don't feel bad about it uh, but there's probably something wrong with them and what could we do with those people there's only one solution that we can support and Instead of having them life in jail, they should execute them. Execute, execute them. So my.
proper proposition is that the courts should make it easier for them to kill th those people, to execute them. So, because in this case, Michael was 19 years old when he committed a crime and almost 10 years later, he was executed. But wait that long to execute somebody. Because in that time, the, this little this kid that killed two people could have killed more. So why take long? They already had the evidence in the bit in the documentary. Sh they show how inhumane they were with the bodies. They just threw them into the, in the lake instead of call, let's say it was an accident. Call the poli police and turn themselves in. But instead they didn't care. They took one of their friends, Jeremy and Adam. You're not gonna kill one of your paws. You're gonna. Uh, they took him to the woods and tried to kill them, and they did, and they succeeded. So, so in conclusion, we support the. I support the death penalty. And this is my presentation about into the uh, abyss. And thank you for watching.